this is the sad part. You know, we all remember Governor Whitmer and a lot of the, you know, the people like the mayor of Detroit all taking huge credit for the fact that this new law was supposed to stop this kind of discriminatory non-driving factors that insurance companies were using to jack up rates. And um, it's still going to happen. That's Steve Gersten. He's the head of Michigan Auto Law and has been named one of Michigan's top lawyers by multiple publications. Today's episode is a response to many listeners who are seeing their auto insurance rates go up in Metro Detroit anywhere from 10 to 30 percent. That's in stark contrast to what politicians, including Democratic Governor Gretchen Whitmer and Republican Senate Majority Leader Michael Shirky, promised on the big porch on Mackinac Island earlier this year. They were reacting to mounting public pressure to do something about auto insurance rates in the state. They're the highest in the nation. But so far, it seems that it's turning out to be more selfies than substance. Our guest says that things like redlining and gender discrimination will continue, all legally. Gersten lays out a case that Michigan elected leaders basically got outplayed by Lansing lobbyists, leading to a situation where affordable car insurance, especially in the city of Detroit, is more theory than reality. Today's Daily Detroit is episode 383 of the podcast, released on Friday, November 22nd, 2019. I'm Jer Stays. That conversation with Steve Gerstin is after this word to remind you that episodes like this are only possible because of our members. It allows us to give a platform for tough topics that most potential advertisers would rather we shy away from. Support independent media and become a member of Daily Detroit at patreon.com slash Daily Detroit. And thank you. So joining me on the line is Steve Gersten from Michigan Auto Law. He is a lawyer. He is an expert in the ways of auto insurance and what's going on in our state. And I wanted to talk to him because, I mean, this is something that's been on our radar for a while. Longtime listeners of Daily Detroit will know that the auto insurance thing has been an ongoing story, an ongoing saga, and we're not done yet. One of the things that was kind of rolled out earlier this year was there was supposed to be a major savings for not just Detroiters, but Michiganders around their car insurance. Steve, it's looking like that's maybe not the case. No, it's it's not going to be the case. Um, unfortunately, I think the politicians took credit for a lot of things that are are not going to happen. And a lot of these savings, these guaranteed savings that they were parading, as well as getting rid of a lot of the, the worst of the discriminatory non-driving factors, things like redlining and gender, uh, they're still going to be around. So how are they still going to be able to redline? Because there was a lot of deal made about a fair deal for Detroiters. Mayor Mike Duggan talked about all this stuff, touted savings. I mean, I did some math when I was up there. Even the proposed sa savings really wouldn't cut Detroit's car insurance that much. And that is, it doesn't even seem to be the case. Yeah. So redlining is its own issue. And it's, it's separate from the savings promises they made that are also going to be very disappointing for two totally different reasons. So for, for the redlining, unfortunately, what they did, <laughs> the, the lobbyists um, and lawyers on the insurance company side were a lot smarter than the politicians, I think. So let's take redlining and zip codes. Um, the new law says you can't use zip codes anymore, and, and you can't. But guess what they can do? Um, they turned around and created their own quasi-zip codes, and they're now using territories. Um, now, you may ask, what's the difference between a, a, quote, territory and a zip code? And uh, the answer is there isn't one. Um, they can still charge more if the insurance company doesn't like where you live. And unfortunately, for a lot of your listeners that live in the city of Detroit, uh, insurance companies don't like them very much. And that's why they, they charge them so much more. Do we have any transparency on how these territories are are drawn? I mean, one of the things we've learned with the legislature is that, you know, you may have legislators, but it's all on how you draw the lines and what happens. Yeah, no, the insurance companies are going to create their own their own ratings. Um, so, you know, with with territories, for example, you know, or, for example, with credit scores, you know, they're going to use um, information that is widely available to them and create their own de facto ways around the new law. So with, with zip codes, it's going to be territorial ratings, um, so they can still charge people more who live in places like Detroit. 
uh, with credit scores. Uh, they can't use your credit score anymore, but they can still use your credit information, your credit report. Your, uh, they can create their own credit scores uh, using something called an insurance score and charge these drivers more as well. So, you know, they're still going to be, they still have all these loopholes that they created in this new law that makes it perfectly legal. If you ask me, it's unconscionable, but it, it is perfectly legal. And, you know, unfortunately, the one protection that people have in many other states that we don't have here in Michigan is, you know, in other states like California or, or you know, a lot of other states, Illinois, they just can't do this. You know, there are laws on the books. And in Michigan, we don't have that protection. So they just created these loopholes and they're going to keep doing it. So how do they stop this in places like California? Most states, I think, have have some kinds of protections for consumers. And it's it's one of either two ways. It's either legislative protections or it's through the courts. And And what you see when you start looking at some of these other states is pretty much a split. In many states, the, the courts rule that this was, you know, violates the Constitution, violates the Equal Protection Clause and due process. This is discriminatory by the insurance companies. And then in, in many states um, where I think you probably have more progressive state legislatures, um, the legislature took action on their own and said that insurance companies can't do this. The other thing I would just note is um, the insurance commissioner in most of these other states is much more powerful than the one that we have in Michigan. So um, I guess that's a third area where, you know, you've got insurance commissioners in some states like Missouri, which is not particularly a a progressive state, but where you have an insurance commissioner that can um, exert a lot more power to stop a lot of these practices by the insurance companies. But, you know, listen, this is the sad part. You know, we all remember Governor Whitmer and a lot of the you know, the people like the mayor of Detroit all taking huge credit for the fact that this new law was supposed to stop this kind of discriminatory non-driving factors that insurance companies were using to jack up rates. And um, it's still going to happen. So playing devil's advocate, what about the argument that some insurance advocates and others make that, well, they have to do this to cover their losses or that there is a justified business reason for this? All right. I think I think my head will explode if I try and take the devil's advocate position on behalf of the insurance companies because it is it is it is on its face discriminatory because what you're saying is is that you know whether it's the use of sex, whether it's the use of you know credit scores, whether it's it's redlining, what you're saying is is that to equally safe drivers with the exact same driving record that an insurance company can discriminate on the basis of completely non-relevant, non-driving factors and jack up the rates that an equally safe driver in, let's say, southwest Detroit, who's never had a car crash, who's never had traffic violations, will now have to pay two or three times more than another driver who, let's say, is is unfortunately, let's say, white and lives in one of the affluent suburbs, and and that is why it is on its face discriminatory. Now, there there is some data out there that says that people of lower socioeconomic means um, are more likely to make claims, especially smaller claims. But the reality is, and and this is the ugly part of it, is that the insurance companies just don't like doing business in cities like Detroit. Um, and that's why they can charge them so much more uh, for the people that live there. And, and they get away with it, and they've been getting away with it. There are other parts that, that, that honestly, you can't defend at all. I mean, you know, take gender. You know, the insurance companies have been charging women and widows more than men and widowers, even though there's a law on the books, actually, that, that makes that illegal. They've been doing that. And, and this is the crazy part, is that women, statistically, are actually much safer drivers than men. Um, so it doesn't even make sense using, using data to explain why they've, been, why they've been doing that. But they have, and, and they've been getting away with it by using some, uh, an, an excuse, another loophole, for, for how they've um, been describing this type of insurance. So your point about not wanting to do or not liking to do business in the city of Detroit resonates with me as a longtime city resident and knowing what our listeners have been sharing with me over the last month, that they are actually not seeing savings. They're seeing premiums go up 
now. And then yep. I have cases of commercial folks who are seeing things go up as much as 30% uh, with, with their coverage. And then they're all sharing with me that oftentimes there is only one choice to underwrite their policy, which basically creates a monopoly and eliminates all competition. What on earth is going on? I thought, you know, both sides of the aisle told us we were supposed to have savings. Yeah. So what your listeners are seeing right now is as they come up for renewal, uh, their insurance companies are raising their rates, in some cases, by up to 25%, even though the new law hasn't even taken effect yet. And even though under the new law, things are supposed to be going down. Well, and as yeah, I said, I have a confirmed was, case of 30%. I have a confirmed case of 30%. So what you're saying is, um, but everyone is seeing these big renewal jumps um, right now uh, of their car insurance. And um, like you said, you know, you're, you're seeing rates even higher than that. So why is this happening? What you have, unfortunately, is, is that the insurance companies came up with some really clever ways to get around the mandatory savings requirement of this new auto law that, like I said, hasn't even taken effect yet. The biggest loophole is that the law did not take immediate effect. So Governor Whitmer signed this on May 30th of this year. Much of the new law, the bulk of it, takes effect next year, July 1, 2020. So we're seven months away, right? The, the issue is because it did not take immediate effect, that means these mandatory savings requirements imposed on the insurance companies also did not take immediate effect. Because it did not take immediate effect, insurance companies are raising people's rates right now so they can lock in profits. And that way, they have, when, they, when they're required to, to, under the new law, to start cutting they're now going to be cutting from this higher number so that they can keep their profit margins intact, which is very clever. Again, totally frustrates the, the spirit, the intent, and the plain meaning of the new law, which was supposed to be price savings for consumers, but that's what the insurance companies are doing. And I'll just add one more thing, is that even when these guaranteed savings do take effect in seven months, people are going to be extremely disappointed because they've really been sold a bill of goods and the savings that they've been promised um, are not going to materialize. Why is that? So the, the biggest reason is when they're saying that you're going to see savings of 20 or 30 or 40%, what people have to realize is that that's not a savings of 20, 30 or 40% on your total auto insurance bill. That's a savings of 20, 30, or 40% of only the PIP portion of your no-fault bill. And that is around 40% of your bill. So if you can't afford insurance now, and you're talking about a savings of 20% of 40% of your bill a year from now, you're probably not going to be able to afford insurance a year from now either. And the other part is, as you're noticing, is that the insurance companies are already raising rates now before the new law takes effect. And areas like collision coverage, which is about 50% of your bill, are going up, as is liability insurance. So, so they're going to raise the other parts that they can keep raising, even as they're applying these, these reductions to the 40% that they have to apply it to. And people are going to be extremely frustrated. There's one other thing the insurance companies are doing right now that um, is is just incredibly dirty. So, you know, the new law requires that they provide savings based upon what their current rates are. And um, what they're starting to do uh, is file as um, new companies with the department, with DIFS, with the Department of Insurance Financial Services, slightly changing the name a little bit in their uh, incorporation filings. So that way they're going to have a clean slate because under this new company filing, they don't have any ratings history, so they don't have to provide rate savings. So, you know, again, it's, it's like it's really, really clever, and there are lobbyists who are a lot smarter than the politicians. It's kind of crazy when you look at all the things that they're, they're doing to try and get around this new law. Um, even this MCCA cut, by the way, that, that was in the news the second week of November – uh, where they were trumpeting this this massive 55% savings, 
the vast majority of your listeners, the vast majority of people in Detroit aren't going to see any savings whatsoever because the, <laughs> the savings that the MCCA cut takes effect. I don't mean to laugh, but it's just, it's so absurd to me. Um, it doesn't take effect for, for another seven months. But meanwhile, the very next day that, that this, after this takes effect, that's the day when drivers in Michigan can now finally choose what level of PIP coverage they want. And the sad reality is, and it's sad to me as an auto accident lawyer, but the sad reality is most people never think that a car accident is going to happen to them. So they're going to choose lower levels of PIP. And that means that because they're choosing levels of, of no-fault PIP that's less than the unlimited portion, that this will never apply to them because they'll, they'll never be able to turn to the MCCA if they're ever catastrophically injured in a car crash. So it's completely illusory. It won't even apply to, to the majority of drivers in Michigan. Well, this all is very depressing. Um, what? <laughs> Sorry to depress you. <laughs> no, I mean, but it's good because I'm a lawyer. You... I have that effect on everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's it's good too to talk about this because I think we need to have these kinds of like real conversations beyond beyond what I call fake politician victory laps. You know, our role is being watchdogs of everybody because, you know, regardless of party, it's important that we keep an eye on what's happening with our money and with our policies. The next question I have is what can people do about this? Because this seems extremely disappointing, especially considering the promotion that these folks have done over the last, you know, few months. You know, unfortunately, this is the new law. And the reality is, if you look at the polling before this new law took effect, uh, the politicians on both sides were under tremendous pressure to say they did something because the reality is people hated the, the auto insurance law in Michigan even more than they hated our roads, according to a lot of the polling out there. So they were under pressure to say they did something, even though they, they ended up creating a very bad law that is, is not going to do much. So, so in terms of your question, what can people do until, you know, probably two or four years from now, there's some kind of referendum that will give people the choice on whether they want to abolish no fault entirely and maybe become a pure tort state like Ohio so they could see savings of up to 50% of their auto insurance. The reality is all you can do is best protect yourself and your family now. And what I would recommend to your listeners as an auto accident lawyer and as an insurance lawyer is it is worth it. It is really, really worth it for people to to pay up and get the unlimited portion of PIP because the reality is, is that even though no one likes to think that they will be a victim, you know, it does happen, and if there are millions of dollars in, in medical bills because you're, you know, you're, you suffer a massive TBI or a spinal cord injury or you lose a leg, and you know all the things that I help people with, if you choose a fifty thousand dollar PIP cap, you know that's gone in a weekend. That's literally gone by the time you leave the hospital if you have a serious injury, and now you are on your own, and that means that if you don't have great health insurance. Um, you you lose all of your personal savings and you have to declare personal bankruptcy because of medical debt, which is the downside of these pure tort laws, by the way, and that's what happens in other states. And then you get shifted onto Medicaid and the taxpayers are going to pick up the bill because the bills aren't going away. They're just getting shifted now to the rest of us as taxpayers. But Medicaid doesn't pay for a lot of the essential services that people need. So, I mean, the, there are three things that I tell everybody now um, that they should do. You know, one is they, they should buy the unlimited PIP to protect themselves. Two, they should buy the highest liability insurance they can because the reality is that is actually, unlike no fault, that is actually very, very inexpensive. It's very cheap. Liability insurance is the insurance you take out if you cause a crash and injure someone. So now that we have this new law, the, the negligent driver now is going to be responsible for a lot of those medical bills. So if you cause millions of dollars in future medical care because of a terrible injury, you know, understand that, that now as a negligent driver, you know, you're responsible for, for the lifetime medical costs. And that means you can lose your house and your life savings, and, and it could really have a, a horrible effect. And literally for the price of, of a movie ticket and popcorn and, you know, and, and a pop, you know, you can buy a much higher level of liability insurance 
And, and I really do recommend that to protect yourself now. And then the third and, and probably the most important thing is there's something called uninsured, underinsured motorist coverage. And what that means is, is just like the name implies, if you're hit by someone who is either uninsured, like over 50% of the drivers in Detroit currently are, and by the way, probably will continue to be after the new law because these savings are illusory, as we've been talking about for the most part for Detroiters. Um, if you're if you're hit by an uninsured driver, or now if you're hit by an underinsured driver, because a lot of drivers are going to still have minimum liability coverage and they're not going to be collectible. What that allows you to do is then turn to your own insurance company that will then make up the difference between the the inadequate insurance limits of the negligent driver who hit you and the full cost of, let's say, your, your injuries, your pain and suffering, and your medical bills up to that level of underinsurance that you purchased. And that's dirt cheap. Um, that is one of the best deals there is out there, but nobody knows about it. And insurance agents... You know, many of them mean very well, but they're not terribly well educated on the insurance laws or, or what happens in real life. And a lot of them don't even tell people. So, you know, you might go to your agent and say, I want the best coverage to fully protect myself and my family. And they might sell you a million dollars in liability insurance, but they're not even telling you in many cases about uninsured or underinsured motorist coverage. And for literally $30, $40, you could buy another million dollars of, of uninsured, underinsured motorist coverage. And if you live in Detroit, you are insane not to have this. So, so those are the three things I really recommend that people can do now to protect themselves. And hopefully, hopefully, the politicians will do something about these discriminatory non-driving factors in the meantime. And hopefully, hopefully, we're going to do something to empower the insurance commissioner so that Michigan's insurance companies don't have to have the highest profit margins in the nation, which is what they've basically had for the past 20 years in this state. Um, those are huge failings. Those are huge oversights. Unfortunately, the, the Republicans in the legislature um, were not going to really work with the governor on, on doing something to lower profit margins of the insurance companies. And I'll tell you something, you know, if you look at the new law, it actually now is going to increase profit margins of the insurance companies because if you think about it, now the insurance companies, they're capping their exposure because if a lot of people are now buying $50,000 in PIP, um, then they know their exposure, the worst case scenario is $50,000. So that's going to allow them to lock in profits at probably even a higher rate than what they, they currently have been doing. And in the meantime, they want to make sure they're 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 taking personal responsibility on this. So they are raising people's rates now at renewal to make sure those profit margins don't change one bit when they have to start providing these savings in another year. So that is why your friend saw a 30% increase now at renewal time. And that's why people keep coming to me and they're going crazy saying, why, why? I don't understand. The new law hasn't even taken effect yet. What is going on? Why are my rates skyrocketing? So, so those are some of the things people can do. So thank you for your time, Steve. I appreciate you. It's my pleasure. And what I'll do also is I know I covered it very quickly. I'll put on my website, my own recommendations on what insurance coverages people should be buying to protect themselves. Cause I know it gets complicated and if people aren't familiar with this, it, it might be hard to follow what I'm, what I'm saying. So uh, if they want to uh, go to my website, which is Michigan auto law, I'll, I'll put my own recommendations for your listeners as well on, on what they can do now to protect themselves when they talk to their own insurance agents. All right, that's a lot to unpack. If you've got any feedback about the show, send me a note at dailydetroit at gmail.com. Whether you agree with Steve or not, I thought it was important to hear him, and I'm glad we talked to him. And that'll do it for the podcast and for our shows this week. Thanks to Cheyenne Nocerini, Randy Walker behind the scenes. Sven Gustafson has been at the Belarus Press Club in Minsk this week. It's great to see him spread the word about podcasting, free speech, and media that matters. We're glad you're in one of Detroit's sister cities, but uh, this little sound studio in Detroit's North End isn't the same without you in the co-host seat. Make sure to stop by 
patreon.com slash daily Detroit to support us. We have a new thing where if you have something to promote, we have an enhanced level just for you. I'm Jer Stays. Take care of each other, and we'll see you around Detroit.